sun's going down. Sun's going down on the warp one as well now with the arrival of the warp two. That's a cheesy line, I know. Anyways, all right, let's start the story at the beginning. When we compare the warp one with the warp two, we got to start at the beginning. So you'll see me taking off with the warp one there. Cross and downwind. Now that was something that will truly be missed uh, when it comes to the warp one. Uh, I used to call it the any direction takeoff. Basically, you come into a field. Uh, you're trapped, you cannot take off in the direction of the headwind. That's not a problem for the warp one. Take off any direction you want. Uh, not a lot of pilots agreed with that, uh, with that technique. It's, it's kind of difficult to do with a low hang point setup uh, with enough training um, and being shown the right technique. It is possible to do that with a low hang point setup, but um, a lot of pilots found it difficult. Moving on to the warp two, it does not really have that same um, any direction take off capability of the warp one. Yes, it is a bit more forgiving um, than other gliders that you would find in the Dita Grinch, something like the Hadron XX, for example, a lot more forgiving when it comes to that. The Hadron XX, if you didn't take off directly into the wind, you'd have a problem. Um, the warp two, a little bit, little bit uh, more forgiving, but not the warp one. So I would say, now, with the Warp 1 departing the scene, I'm going to miss that. I really am going to miss that. It was a fantastic feature, and it's something that a lot of pilots will have to keep in mind when they are upgrading to the Warp 2, uh, or they're not upgrading to the Warp 2. It is a really fantastic feature that, um, that you could be proud of if you're an owner of a Warp 1. All right, moving on to speed. You know, speed for me, footage overlay in here, uh, Tested exact same date, same condition, same wing load, two exact same sizes in the warps, um, and you can see the speed difference there. Why, uh, why does why does the uh, the speed differences not show on the DDG website? And in actual fact, the warp one shows to be a faster glider on the DDG website. And basically, what happened there was that in the old days when DDG tested a, a glider, they would do that at the maximum wing load in a setup where the maximum speed can be attained with the glider where the warp 2 you've got to take the minimum weight add it to the maximum weight divided by two get to the mid weight section and the speed's now measured measured at that level and that's not really a fair comparison and i think the video that i'm doing now is going to give you a true indication of that speed just direct comparison
um, agility. Warp one, what fantastic agility that glider had. It felt a bit more uncontrollable and as if you're doing a bit tighter turns with the warp one. Um, a little bit more out of control, but fantastic. The warp two is like an evolutionary step when it comes to uh, the agility. It's not, it's not going to be as responsive as the warp one, but it feels more in control and stable when you're doing those rolls. So really fantastic. Now I can keep on going on and on about all the different. All right, so we're interrupting our usual broadcasting with the making of some stupid shit. All right, I'm going to be simulating a engine out landing with the super hot warp two size 18 and basically this is what you guys really need to see when you're considering flying an advanced wing would you be able to do an emergency landing with a glider that does 29 knots for landing so before i do this and risk getting hurt i need you guys to um to like this video and subscribe even though you haven't seen it yet okay no, no, subscribers on the right hand side, the other side. Yeah, the, uh, and thumbs up. Got it? Yeah, oh, cool, let's go. Okay, so what happens when an emergency out happens? It's not a time and place of your choosing. So in this case, uh, I've got trips open, I'm flying along. I'm not sure what the wind direction is. And there goes the engine out. What do you do? First thing you do is you grab the trimmers, you close them all the way. Grab the brake toggles and you pick your landing zone. Alright, I have visual of the landing zone where I am. I do not have the choosing. The trees will allow me to have a clear landing zone. I'm going to land crosswind. Shit, I'm already too high. Back. Please don't let me fuck this up. Please don't let me fuck this up. Shit, I'm gonna land downwind. It's downwind. It's okay. So what you do is you right before you hit the ground, you turn. Oh shit, that's fast. Oh shit, that's fast. And ladies, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, that's how you fuck up the landing out. <laughs> I can't feel my right arm. Uh, look at that in back. You see what happened was I overshot the landing zone. <laughs> and I actually went off this embankment. That's what made me fall. That's what happens. But the snot coming out of me. That's what happens when you, when you fly a hot wing and you get an emergency landing. Not even a pro might get it right. Oh, it hurts. My legs hurt. And that's why you also wear knee padded pants. <laughs> All right, moving on. Get the hell out of here. Got some some lines hanging off here. I don't think I broke something, but definitely unstrung the line. All right, just flying along. Nice thousand quid AGL. And suddenly the engine goes off. Obviously fake, and what you first thing you do is you close up the trimmers to landing speed, and then you grab your toggles and you turn in the direction of where you see a field. All right, I see a field below me. Okay, copy that. So doing is turns to get to that location. Hey, come on, track one. All right, I got someone that's going to offload a smoke grenade for me. Basically what I'm doing is I'm judging the wind. Oh jeez, that thing just completely set fire. I'm gonna have to try and miss it. There we go! I think that's close enough. <laughs> so I took a I took one for the team with that crash. Pretty much landed the snot out of myself. Uh, you guys can see that even if you're a pro, uh, a guy that flies every day that has the required hours plus plus plus. Uh, it can still go wrong at that kind of speed. So a hot lighter should really be for the right kind of experience level. And secondly, you need enough practice uh, on something like spot landings. And it's important because a lot of guys fly from really big fields, so they don't really 
do those practice runs on the spot landings. So when something does go wrong, it can go wrong in a real bad way. Uh, second thing I would say that's important is that um, the kind of situation that if you have an engine out above a built up area, that could really be bad because even though you might have the experience to manage the space and bleed the speed off, you cannot land into the wind. If there's an obstacle in front of you, you can really get hurt. So uh, altitude is your friend. If you've got enough time to pick the spot where you're going to, that's going to help you out. And uh, I will say, like you just saw in my last video, if you can land into the wind, that's the answer because you're getting rid of that speed and um, it's a lot safer. So do those practice runs and be mindful that something like the Warp 1 and the Warp 2, they're really quick when it comes to the landing speeds. Uh, Warp 1, 27 knots coming in, out of ground effect, and the Warp 2, 29 knots. That's a lot of speed, buddy. So keep on practicing, and if you're ready for it, then go for it. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you on the next one.